So good morning on this lovely Monday morning. A um, couple of things to tell you. First of all, uh, this week is uh, a bit of a, rela um, a relaxing, but not relaxing. I've got um, some cover for my kids this week, and they're all going on holiday away, so I'm completely um, free to do what I want when I want. And uh, subsequently, I am spending a week doing splits. But obviously, uh, a week doing splits isn't easy, and it's going to be a lot of work. So this morning, I went and moved 12 hives that were um, put into hives about a week ago. And they're getting heavier. We do have a bit of nectar flow. I've just been to the other end, I call Chestnut Land, uh, all around the Chateau de Una Day, where I've got hives. And there's still quite a bit in flower, and I've checked some hives. They were very aggressive, but often we get that, and I can smell, still smell it here when we get that smell. But what the weather we've got now has gone from cloudy, overcast, and cool after loads and loads of rain to really warm, well, really hot and still, and it's going to peak, I think, at 27 to 29 degrees tomorrow and Thursday. Uh, so it's, it's going to be basically high temperatures with hardly any wind for the next three or four days. So I'm going out after I've got these nukes ready, um, because I'm getting nukes ready to do splits, but I've, I've come back to the workshop this morning to just cool down a bit, because my suit was absolutely drenched after like an hour and a half's work. So I went to drop these hives off, put feeders on them, but not, I'm not putting any feed in them, on them yet. And there's no supers on them, they're just going to be feeding, just to build them out a little bit more before I split them. And then I uh, checked another apiary, I dropped four hives off there because I put eight in one and four in another. That's 12. That's the 12 I moved. And now I'm back to ready nukes. But what I'm doing is I'm going through some, some shakeouts I did yesterday and I'm preparing these um, nukes. So I can take, say, 20 with me. And what I'll do, because it's so hot, I'll go and put some supers on now in the shade and just take my time while it's really hot. And then this evening I'm going to split a whole apiary and make nukes as the sun goes down. And then I can move those hives as the sun goes down to their new location for mating, uh, because also I've got loads of queens coming out from the 22nd. That'll be day 10 on the 22nd. So it's kind of all working and kind of, it's great. It's not that I, I, you know, I'm moaning about having kids or that. It's just great to have actually no ties. Like my kids are older now and they do obviously are pretty self-sufficient. It's quite easy to manage, but when you don't have that, what are they doing, what are they up to, it's so brilliant to focus entirely on what you need to do. And what we need to do now is get as many splits as done as possible in a very short space of time. Because now, the, as you know, the clock is ticking. It's the end of the season for beekeeping. I think we're going to have some honey, but not a huge amount, but around, as I said, the Chateau de Day, where I have a lot of hives. Um, there is a lot of chestnut and flower, and the hives absolutely stink of it. I mean, it's brilliant. And it's the stink I haven't heard, I haven't smelled for a long time. So, uh, what I'm doing then, I'll show you what I'm doing with these nukes. So these are my nukes I showed you before, and I showed you the configuration I was doing before. But this is a nuke that was shaken out, so I'll just show you what I'm doing instead. Because we're going from 10 frames in the brood nest down to 7. So it's pretty simple. So what I'm doing first of all is I'm just looking at the hive. I'm not really doing any major cleaning of the hive this time of the year. I'm just scraping off from propolis, taking out these frames, because obviously these were five frames that were uh, had drone layers in. I will, for instance, reuse this one. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fairly light in colour. There's a bit of drone here and there, but it's not a lot, a lot of drone. So I'm just going to go through this and show you what I do and what I do not re reuse. Now this one here, I'll reuse that because it's only one part of this frame. It's debatable. I could melt that down, but I'll get away with reusing that. Probably the next one. No, I'll be able to use that. That's all good. So I'll take all these frames out. All clean. This was a swarm, you see, that went that I captured in the spring, and it went drone laying, and I didn't have time to shake it out. So now we've got a cleanest box again. It's not that dirty, these boxes. Fairly good. All I'm doing is scraping out any extra propolis from in here with my Slovenian hive tool. It's absolutely perfect for this job because you just literally slide it in and it gets all that propolis out on the end there. 
I'll show you this one. You literally just run it across the top and because it's flat, it doesn't damage the poly. So it's really good, you know. And because my metal liners are on the inside, that's all you really need to do because the inside's fairly clean. And when I rebuild this inside, I'm putting back. So this, is, this will be the configuration, okay? So first of all, I have a partition. Yep, the bees nibble them a little bit sometimes. So this is the way I like to rebuild my, my nukes ready for, to going back in. And actually, I like to build them this way so the entrance is at the front. So that partition goes at the back there. One partition in there. Next to that, we have a frame. Now, it can be a drawn frame. It can be a frame of foundation. So I've got some drawn frames also. So, follow, so the next two, column, next two frames are going to be two more partitions. So that goes in here. Two of those. And then we put in two either frames of foundation or partially drawn. So the bees have got something to do. And when I feed them, they've got something to put in. So what will happen? When I make this nuke, it will run on five frames for the moment. The three frames that are here, that's a frame of foundation, a partition and a partition, that will go into the donor hive, the mother hive I take the nuke from. So I'll be taking three frames of bees and brood, probably more like two frames of bees and brood and one mixed, but it doesn't really matter. The bees have done their job now. The foragers will be mostly out this week while I'm doing my nukes, and I'll be doing this next week as well, so it will change a bit as the time goes on. But I'll be putting those three frames in there, and these three frames go into the colony, and the colony will go down to seven frames for the winter. And why do we do that? Well, in the spring, imagine this is 10 frames. In the spring, number one will be the foundation, number two will be the partition, and number 10 will be another partition. So there'll be five more frames this side on, on a 10 frame. And that's what the configuration will be going into the autumn. You don't need a massive colony to overwinter, and they'll build up well in the spring. But in the spring, I'll take out this partition and number 10 partition, and I'll add another two frames in there of foundation. And then I will also take out this, sorry, I will also have this foundation that will give them space to build should they need it before I intervene. And often they do build it out. If we have a big ivy flow in the autumn, this number one foundation will often be built out before we even get into the, the spring. In other words, going into the winter, it will be full. And that's not a bad thing, because extra food in the colony. But there's no pros and cons. The only thing is, if this gets full in the autumn and the rest of the colony is full as well, there's not much room for them in the spring. You, and in the spring, often I'm taking out three or four frames anyway, just to give them space, and I store the frames. There's actually a lot of evidence to say that 12 frames for us here would actually be better than 10 frames, because it means you have to do less intervention. But I took a lot of frames out this spring, and I stored them, and I used them all to make um, nukes with. Those are the nukes you saw me putting into hives very recently. So there is benefits in doing that, because it gets you to work your colonies you're, you're checking the queen cells, you're removing the frames, you're giving them space at a timely fashion when they need it. So, um, but this is a five frame, five frame nuke essentially because we're leaving that one partition in here and these bees will be growing on five frames. So, but if they, if they do really well and they go into the autumn and we have a good autumn flow, I will remove this partition here and give them another foundation. But you can imagine for me logistically removing Say I made 100 nukes or 150 nukes, so it's 150. You have to find another 150 frames and take out. So is it better to leave that one in, that partition in place, and just hope that they fill up completely? Because there's plenty of food to store them through the winter if they're completely full on five frames. And that's sometimes better because it helps against varroa. You don't want massive, really massive nuke colonies going into the winter. But if I have the frames, I probably will, because if I don't do it now in the spring, I'll need to yank that out and give them that extra space. But that's what I always say about nukes, is that nukes in the spring, if they're on five frames, they are virtually unmanageable. Okay? As I can show you here, I've got a load, a load, a load of nukes at the back here. These are the ones I've got ready. They're all ready to go. These are the ones I'm just making up. It's a bit of a mishmash here. But you'll see at the back there, 
I've got over 80 nukes. They were my first nukes I made. And these are all five frames. And if you go back on my previous videos and you know, pictures on my uh, Visa and Brittany uh, Blogspot channel, you'll see all these, me using these. And they are fantastic for making nukes. But come to the spring, they are a minefield because you don't have that extra space. And you've got to be so on the ball at a time when you're rushed off your feet. So that's why I use six frames now. But I still will use those if I run out of my poly nukes. And I've got quite a few still to come in. Come in. If I run out of my poly nukes, I will go and use, start using some of those. And that's brilliant because it means that everything after that is extra. That's all building, all extra colonies. And if, if I lose a few, it doesn't matter. Obviously, I don't want to lose any. But any extra I make is extra that if I lose, it will replace the others. You know, it's, it's all about just keeping going, doing what you can at the right time. So the other thing I was going to say was i still got quite maybe 30 of these now underneath Mini Plus, which is great. So this week I'm also, of an evening, going to be shaking out the Mini Plus, moving them to another area, and then moving the nukes to another place. So the Queen will be shaken through into the box, just take the whole Mini Plus away, or leave it where it is, depending where it is, and then give them a new Queen. Because I've got so many Queens, I'm just going to chuck Queens in and let them hatch out and get on with it. And that's brilliant. So it's all come at the right time. I've got time to focus on it all, and I've got time to just work late. I'm going to be working till like 10, 11, 12 o'clock every night. We're going to have this lovely time, and I adore this time of year when you get a few beautiful evenings, and you get calm, warm, and the moon is going to be coming to full moon this week, and it'll be, it's absolutely glorious to be out when you've, got, when, the, when, you know, when you've done your job for the day, you feel you're getting ahead, and you've got this wonderful evening that you can walk around in the dark with the moonlight. It's absolutely amazing. If you haven't done it before, I suggest you do it. Go out somewhere where it's open, where you've got no artificial light. The natural light is amazing. And you're surprised how your eyes adapt to the area. And you can see amazing things. You'll see owls flying around. You'll see bats, all that kind of stuff. It's absolutely magical. And to me, that's like so lovely to be able to do where we live here because there's not much artificial light. But anyway... Away with the romanticism, I'm working my socks off now, getting so I'm going to work here probably till like 12. Then I'm loading a load of supers. I'll have maybe 20 nukes here, 20 to 21 nukes, three times, because it takes seven across my truck here, and it fits really well. Seven nukes fits in perfectly, lengthwise. So I put the nukes on, and then I'm going to load about 40 supers behind, and I'm going to go and do the apiaries where the, where the Chestnutville, Chestnut Land is, and see if there's any that need a few. And I will add a few more. And I'll do it also so I'll know for the future, because it's all, it's all new. Regarding the honey and the highs, two, a week ago I'd have said it's a complete dead loss, we're never going to get anything. So already we're getting a little bit, because it's gone, as usual, it's gone from the sublime to the ridiculous, it's gone from cool, not very warm, um, damp, very, very damp and humid and overcast and cloudy, to scorching hot, drying out quickly, but it'll be wet enough the ground for the next week or so. So whatever is there will give. If there's thistle, so they give. There's the buckwheat up there is amazing. I've just been to it this morning. It is full of bees. It is now like probably up to my waist, which is fantastic. It's, it's spaced beautifully. It's fed well. It's lush green. I think it's got another good week to go for it. So I'm pretty sure that where I've got an apiary there, that will have some good buckwheat honey. So it's amazing. I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's not still a disaster because it's still looking like a disaster. But I will have some honey rather than absolutely none. And that's all I can say at this stage. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens and hope that um, I can make enough what I've got, you know, what I've got. I'm, I'm going to have to find extra work. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, it is what it is. As I said so many times before, you just have to focus. I've got to make the nukes now. I've got to keep on making nukes, making nukes for as many as I can. And if, if I have to stop suddenly because the weather, so be it. The weather is going to break down at the end of this week. But at least I am doing the best I can with what we've got. And that's what beekeepers have to do. You, you've got to be dynamic. You've got to look at what situation arises. And now the nukes, are, it's time to make nukes. But you've got to make as many as you can and more if you always can. Because those are the ones that are going to just get them through the winter. And those are the ones that are going to make you money in the spring and give you, time, give you more bees and brood and everything else the following year. Because we might have winter losses. And being sustainable... Where are, my lint, where are my recovery for my winter losses? They're right here in my apiary when I need them. And if you ever want to find out about sustainability, go and look at Mike Palmer's website. 
um, franchilapreach.com, fantastic website, and um, look at those videos. We all kind of work together on this sustainability thing now. It's all about making nukes when the time's right and just keeping a hold of those and using them to your best advantage. So you, all you're doing is putting a bit of bees and brood in a box in the summer, giving them a queen, however you do it, whether it's a mated queen, and then um, you've got that colony. It's a separate thing. Just take your time when you do it. Do a good job. Make sure you leave the, the try and leave always. The, if you can't find her, sometimes you can't, but try and leave the queen that's in the mother hive, the donor hive, that gives bees to this box. Always make sure she's in the main hive and feed that hive afterwards and look after it. Give it what it needs. But if you do that, you'll end up with a lot of lovely nukes that are ready for the following spring. And that's the key to it. We all should be doing that these days. And if you don't, and you've got more than, say, five, ten hives, you're a bit foolish not to do it because you're covering yourself and you're giving yourself the extra extra bees and brood for when you might need it the following year to your replacements. And if you have some spare, you can sell some. There you go. That's the way it is. So, um, enough of me rabbiting. I'll uh, try and update you each day this week and let you know how things go. Oh, one other thing I want to mention. I checked some mini nukes yesterday, and very good news that... Other than the ones I put nukes under, I've got 15 queens to harvest, about 15. And there I'm going to harvest them probably tomorrow, because the nukes I'm making this afternoon or the day after, they will have mated queens. So I've got at least I've got a few mated queens that will give me 15 boxes of mated queens instantly. So that's a really good thing as well. And then those mini nukes will have queens that I've made. I've actually made uh, over, I think, 190 queens. I didn't graph yesterday because I just thought I've got enough for now. I'm stocking another cell builder probably tomorrow for the following week just to, so I can go around adding extra queens in because that's what you do when you're not sure if one's going to make. They very rarely swarm this time of year. I've just done a tour of my tour of, say, some of the apries this morning, and they're working. They're not swarming. They're just getting on with things. But they are aggressive, and it's really hard work because your suit gets wet and soaked through and then the bees can sting you through the suit but anyway enough of that take care i'll catch you again very shortly bye for now